Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Last time, well, there's been a lot of battleship things going on, and there's been a lot of, you know, not so positive stuff. So today I figured we'll look at something completely different, at a destroyer. And this is the Shiratsuyu. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The uh, Tier 7 Japanese gunboat destroyer. Now, before we look at this ship, let's have a very quick look at the actual tech tree. So at tier five, um, the 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 tech trees are splitting. So the traditional line is on the Mutsuki at tier five, and then the Fubuki and Aka, and then the Kagero, up all the way to the Shimakaze. This is the original torpedo boat uh, Japanese destroyer line. But you can also go up the gunboat destroyer line. Now um, these destroyers, and then uh, they. There's a bit of a history behind this, right? So, in the 1920s, after the uh, Washington Naval Treaty, the Japanese uh, were severely restricted in the amount of capital ships they could build. So they decided, well, okay, then if we can't build a lot of capital ships, then we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna build heaps of destroyers and um, dominate the seas that way. And that's how uh, the Fubuki class of destroyers came to be, which we see here on the torpedo boat line in tier 6. And these were extremely advanced, um, probably the best destroyers worldwide at that time. But then the London Navy, uh, Naval Treaty came into being, and that restricted the tonnage that Japanese destroyers could have to around about 1,500. And the Fubukis were heavier than that. <laughs> so... So um, they went, okay then, uh, dear, na dear uh, ship designers, build us a destroyer that fits into the 1,500 ton limit, but has the same armament or firepower as the Fubukis. <laughs> so that's where the Hatsuharu came from. Now, obviously, if you're shrinking a ship by around about 250 tons of that size, um, you're going to have to make some compromises. And that means the Hatsuharu was... Well, distinctly not a good ship. <laughs> so they they were very very top heavy because of the amount of amount of armament that was sitting on top of it and the shrunken hull. They were not quite as powerful as the um, as the Fubukis and were generally not as good really. And the Shiratsuyu is um, really just a continuation of the Hatsuharu line. So these are still the traditional uh, torpedo boat destroyers in in reality. They were meant to be um, to be torpedoing stuff, and the the only difference was that they were well um, fitting into the naval treaty. Now, of course, once that was all sorted out with the Akizuki, we actually get the first um, carrier escort AA destroyer on the Japanese line, and that's when we get the really good fast firing guns. So even though the Shiratsuyu is on the, the gunboat destroyer line, she's actually, um, well, not that great. So let's let's quickly compare her to um, to the Akka at tier seven in the torpedo boat line. Uh, the Akka has more armor and slightly more hit points. The um, the Akka is much faster. So the Shiratsuyu only does thirty six knots. Aka does over 40. The, um, in terms of maneuverability, the Aka is better. Very slightly so, but she is. Uh, the Aka has six guns. These are the 127mm L50s. So these were, in theory, dual-purpose guns. In practice, not so much, because um, they were just not fast enough to track. But they should have been dual-purpose guns. Uh, so she's got six of those with a six second reload and the Shiratsuyu has five because it's a smaller ship so they had to actually strip one of the guns out and replace it with a single turret because it wouldn't fit otherwise. Now of course given that this is the in big air quotes uh, gunboat line she gets a slightly faster reload but it's not a really huge difference 
she gets a slightly better range, but other than that, these are the exact same guns, just one fewer than on the Akka. Uh, in terms of torpedoes, uh, the Shiratsuyu was the first Japanese destroyer that had quadruple torpedo launches, which is great, which means we get eight torpedoes. Uh, the Akka gets nine, and they reload 10 seconds faster, 15 actually. Uh, they have the same, right? They have a longer range on the Akka. They do a very slightly amount more damage on the Shiratsuyu to kind of compensate for that. Um, in terms of AA, like I said, the 127 millimeters were in theory dual purpose, but in practice not quite. So while we have some AA, it's not a it's not an, an outrageous amount, and the AA on the Akka is probably better because she's got an an additional 127 millimeter main gun. The concealment based uh, surface detection of 5.6 kilometer on the Akka is better than on the Shiratsuyu with 5.8 kilometer. So um, the Shiratsuyu is inferior to the Akka in every single aspect, uh, except one. The Shiratsuyu gets a smoke, or two rather. <laughs> she has two consumables of the smoke generator one, whereas the Akka doesn't have that. She only gets the engine accelerator. Right, so I started this video with saying that we're going to have a bit of more to, more of a positive vibe, and now now I'm telling you that this tier seven gunboat destroyer is in all possible ways inferior to the tier seven torpedo boat destroyer. Well, except for the smoke, and the fact that she's tier seven, which means you can get into you get yourself into tier six games, <laughs> and she actually has. Um, uh, she, she actually is not a terrible torpedo boat. And given that she does have the two smokes, you can occasionally do things like, you know, sit in your smoke screen a little bit but and, and, and fire at things. All right, so let's have a quick look at the equipment. Uh, main battery mod one, because, well, this is... This is... Um, I, rumor has it that this is a gunboat and the turret traverse isn't great because these, these are the early versions of the turrets and they were really not good. So now we get 12 degrees per second. Because I do have a bit more range on the main guns, and I do like to fire my guns on these things. So, uh, turret traverse mod it is, and then um, the propulsion mod in two, and the concealment in three. Because there are, well, you are in a tier 7 ship, so you do encounter unpleasant things like, um, I don't know, uh, Cleveland's, <laughs> <laughs> or, or Brooklyn's, or... Um, uh, all, all kinds of all kinds of stuff that makes your makes your life really really uh, really really unpleasant um, shores <laughs> things like that. Oftentimes you are in situations where you actually need to play torpedo boating, and that's why I have the concealment in here. Still, she is on the slow side with the whole thing. Now the commander has been on uh, has been is training up for this line, so he doesn't quite have the mist weaver skill yet because that's two more levels up. But uh, we do have the underwater protection, we have the torpedo alert, the preheating obviously because you want to get off the ground quicker, and she also gets the engine accelerator. I do have Victoria's Charge because reasons, and uh, I actually ended up uh, taking Daredevil in this one because again, um, this is going up for the gunboat destroyer line, and I am assuming that most of the time I am going to be full on guns blazing with those things anyway, so once we get to Ak Akizuki or Kitakazu or Harugomo, um, yeah, it's 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 guns blazing time. I have the exploit weakness because that oftentimes makes sense on these destroyers, and obviously down the road you would what you will want the engine overload and you want the mist weaver skill most importantly. But we don't have that yet, so I have the reasonably short duration smoke. So, um, why is this a fun ship? Well, it depends. So you can have out you can you can just. You know, run in games with three cruisers and an aircraft carrier and not get anything done. But you can also have a lot of fun if you're top tier in the Shiratsuyu. And here we are on Haven. Now it is a carrier battle and uh, there's an Atlanta and a Belfast in the enemy team. So uh, this kind of matches my description of, well, you can't get very much done. But we're playing on Haven and Haven has some interesting implications occasionally. Especially if you're sp if you're spawning in the southern end of the map, uh, there is a Prince Eitel Friedrich, a Dunkirk, and a Normandy on the enemy team. So we do have a bunch of battleships at least to deal with, and of course we're spawning in the south. So it's about time to convince the team not to 
go into B cup because <laughs> B cup is a death trap. So we want to go, uh, we want to go C and D. I'm of course spawning at the wrong end here, but that's all right. I'm just gonna speed my engine boost up, uh, get my engine boost up, and um, uh, Lucifer over here, uh, Satan, says, uh, "Let's go C." And I'm like, I completely agree with you. <laughs> Let's please go C. And um, maybe one of the cruisers over there can go and go can capture D Cup. So we have the rare occasion that the team is actually uh, doing the right thing here. Except for that one cruiser. So that one cruiser is dead. So we're one cruiser down. I mean, he's dead. He knows it. He doesn't know it yet, but he's dead. Uh, yeah, someone, sh someone should go and capture D. It looks like um, the cruiser on the far eastern end is probably AFK because it's currently get getting overtaken by the battleship. So this is, all get this is already getting going all manner of wrong. But at least the carrier isn't scouting. I mean, the enemy carrier. So um, I can get into C cup unmolested, but I should run into something. Okay, there's one of the cruisers over in B. And um, that, yeah, there's one of the battleships, and we're almost in C cup. Now, so we're still not capturing D because the cruiser over there is AFK, and the battleships are uh, not listening. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the carrier can go and capture D. That'd be great. Okay, I don't want to blind fire because I have an over 60 second reload, and there come some planes. But I am on a stealth build, so I'm not as easy to spot. Let's see if we find ourselves something. Okay, there's a Normandy. I'm just going to park myself behind this island. And in theory, I should be able to fire over this without getting spotted. Okay, there's a Trento. I do not want to be seen by the Trento. And I'm spotted, which is um, unfortunate. It might be the planes, the enemy planes that are hanging around. Um, but I'm, I'm not super sure why I'm spotted. So I am behind this, this ridge here. Maybe the ridge is just not high enough and the top of my ship's poking over. So the Trento is firing at me. That hurts, which I, I do not wish to be fired at by the Trento. Thank you very much. But there's a Normandy parked over there. So let's go and outflank this guy. And uh, Lucifer points out, uh, uh, yeah, let's let's do something about the Normandy. And I say, yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm in a destroyer. I can do this. Okay, there's another battleship over there. But, um, oh, and our cruiser has woken up and we've captured D. Great. Okay, so see, this is something you can't do in the Akka. Uh, you, you, you can't just sail up broadside next to a Normandy, pop a smoke screen, and then wait what he's, he's doing. So I'm using my torpedo indicator to see where he's going. Okay, he's accelerating, so um, so torps out. We'd uh, lead a little bit ahead, and at this distance, I really uh, don't really, I can't really miss. He's full on broadsiding, so that's probably a dead Normandy. Uh, there, there she goes. But the Prince Eitel Friedrich is. Um, a reasonably dangerous battleship, so <laughs> I am going to have to deal with that thing. Okay, uh, we've lost the cru we've lost the cruiser which was going B, uh, which was predictable. So I'm just backing up from the Prince Anselm Friedrich and dodging some shots here, and because while <laughs> while she's very dangerous to destroyers, uh, she does <laughs> you do have to hit me in order to do damage. Now I, I don't have I don't have a huge amount of firepower. Um, straight up forwards, but now, now my torpedoes are co reasonably close to reload, so let's start the run-up. Full speed ahead, pop the engine boost, um, because she is not the quickest on the uh, under the sun, but we do make uh, we do make almost 40 knots with the engine boost, act, boost active. And one second, now my torpedoes are reloaded, so here, have that. And I'm very quickly healed, because... Yeah, he's firing armor piercing. That's fine. <laughs> he's all over penetrating. If he was firing high explosive, I'd be dead. But um, okay, now we're one kill ahead, but we're only thirty points ahead. So and I'm catching some more shots. But right now I'm unspotted because everything that could spot me is dead, and the carrier isn't doing anything with his planes. So we are we are, we are ahead, but not by much. And both teams are holding two cups, and I'm relatively low on health. So maybe I can just go and. Well, take their capture capture points away because it doesn't look like they're anywhere near them. Um, I, I see one, two, three, four ships. The carrier must be somewhere. I don't think the carrier is in A cup. He looks more like the carrier somewhere around B cup because the planes are not starting from back here. So I'm just avoiding the planes using my concealment, and I'm just going to grab the capture circle. And okay, we've lost. We've just lost our Atlanta, so we're still ahead on points, but just barely. Okay, Ismail takes out the Atlanta. Well done, and uh, we're just gonna grab that. We're just gonna grab that cap, uh, just to ensure that uh, yeah things don't go wrong from here on from here on out. 
But yeah, we've taken care of two of their battleships, and um, again, this is not something you could have done that easily in, say, well, you could have kind of done it in the Banzayaka, but, <laughs> you know, just park, your, park yourself next to a battleship um, brazenly broadside on, pop the smoke, and um, and just do something. So, you, you see, I, I'm, I'm saying this is a gunboat destroyer. Well, it's in the gunboat destroyer line, but really, honestly, it isn't. And it historically wasn't either. It was a torpedo boat. It was just a... Um, a treaty destroyer that was somewhat shrunk uh, in order to uh, and was trying to was trying to make to be a, a fubuki sort of okay there's the independence now I'm going to start shooting at the independence because I'm spotted anyway but um, uh, he's not sitting actually in the capture circle so I can actually take that away from him not going to launch torpedoes because the independence is moving so these torps would miss if I was going to fire from here but uh, I'm just going to get a couple of shots out um, on the independence. Uh, the high explosive on these Japanese, uh, on these Japanese 127s is, is not bad. Oh, Belfast. Okay, wiggle the ship, wiggle the ship. <laughs> just in case he's looking my way, because that thing can just one-shot me right now. Uh, wiggle the ship, I'm air spotted, and get behind cover. Okay, whew. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention, he's probably busy otherwise. Uh, all right, three on three. But we are ahead on point because we're now controlling all the capture circles. So uh, that was definitely the right move. Okay, I'm just going to drop some torpedoes in the general direction of that independence over there. And uh, you know, there's Trento as well and there's Belfast in the smoke probably. So I'm going to smoke up and uh, well, not, not really. I don't think I'm going to hit the independence from here because uh, we only have 20 seconds left. And by the looks of it, the independence is going to be dead by the time the torpedoes get there. And he's also obviously dodging. I got more torpedoes incoming, but you know, I just don't want to get killed because we're three. Uh, probably if I was killed, it would be fine, but none of the other ships should be killed by now. So everybody please survive. And yeah, because, uh, because I've because i I've gotten these two capture circles off them. Uh, well, we still got a torpedo hit on the Trento. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the Shiratsuyu. Um, it's, it's a fun ship. Just, just play her like, um, like a, like what she is, like a miniature, a miniature Akka with, with smoke screens, and I would generally say she is a ship just to entertain yourself until you come to the Akizuki, which is when the gunboat line actually really starts making sense. So don't be surprised that the Harugomo and the Shiratsuyu are actually terrible gunboats. It is historically accurate <laughs> because they, they're not good at, they're, they're not as good at, the, at it as the Fubuki. Simple as that. So, yeah, but this is still a, it's still a fun ship. You can still have fun at it. You can still have great games in the ship. So, um, totally worth, uh, worth going up the line. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.